Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Yawn, Senior Investigator from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities Family and Community Health and I live in Blaine, Minnesota. I'm here to discuss my article with my co-authors, Analysis of Vascular Event Risk Following Herpes Zoster from 2007 to 2014 United States Insurance Claims Data. Herpes zoster, as everyone knows, or shingles, is a recurrence of the varicella infection. Literature suggests that there's an association between herpes zoster and increased risk of vascular events, such as stroke, TIA, and acute MI, both near the time of the diagnosis and in some studies for years after. In the United States, we have smaller studies that look at a shorter period of time and say, indeed, they do see an increased risk in the first short period, but not long term. However, these studies are small, and we wanted to use a study design where we had a much larger sample size and could look at a broader age group not only the age 50 and above where zoster is common, but in the group 18 to 50 also. So our study design is a population retrospective study. It's a cohort using Truvian Health Market Scan commercial and Medicare supplement databases between 2007 and 2014. We had two analyses. For the main analysis, we used a group of patients 18 and older with an acute herpes zoster episode and matched them by propensity matching two to one to people who had not had a zoster episode. And we controlled for risk factors for vascular events such as age, gender, hypertension, and lipid abnormalities. We also matched on smoking status and BMI, but we had to do that through claims-linked EMR data and looked for these important vascular risk factors. However, this greatly decreased our population. So we decided to do a post hoc analysis directly matching one-to-one -one on cohorts of people with zoster and without zoster, matching on all the risk factors except smoking and BMI, and this greatly increased our sample size. In the study design, we did endpoints of analysis that were TIA, stroke, and acute MI, and the composite of these three events together, meaning stroke or TIA or acute MI. The herpes zoster associated risk was calculated including incident rates, incident rate ratios, adjusted incident rate ratios, and Kaplan-Meier curves. We assessed the increased risk for patients in two periods. The first one was the prodromal and 30 days after, and then the prodromal to one year after. In the main results, when we adjusted for BMI and smoking status, we had only 23,000 patients, still large, but not huge, and 46,000 controls. In the post hoc analysis, when we didn't include the medical records, smoking and BMI, we were able to go up to 709,000 controls and the same number of cases. Participants analysis were about 65% women with an average age of 56 years. Over 80% of them were living in urban areas and 74% were enrolled in commercial insurance of some type. The number of chronic illnesses on average was less than one per person. The most commonly reported ones were diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and coronary artery disease. More than 73% of those in the study were overweight or obese, 24% being obese, and 62% had other risk factors. In the cohort, both analyses were done, as we said, matching for most of these things. In the main analysis, uh, you can see from this table that these are the multivariate adjusted risk ratios. 
These are the incident risk ratios for both the composite, that meaning the TIA stroke or acute MI, or one of those events. You can see in the main analysis when we had the composite and we used the entire risk period, there is really no statistically significant difference in those with and without an acute zoster event. However, when we go back to the period from 30 days before to 30 days after the period immediately surrounding the event, we do see an increase. We see an increase for the composite, we see an increase for TIA, and we see an increase for the risk of stroke. And you see this in all ages as a composite. It's about a 30% increase or an IRR of 1.3. When you get to the lower age group, you see that the uh, incident risk ratio goes up to a factor of about three times increase or threefold increase. And for the age 50 and over, it's about a 1.2 or a 20% increase for the composite. For the TIA, you can see that the rates are a little higher for each of the IRRs. For the aggregate of all ages, it's about 1.6. For the younger age group for TIA, it's about a five-fold increase. And for older 50 and above, it's about 1.4 or a 40% increase. For stroke, there are also increases in each of the groups in this period right around the acute event. Now the bottom half of this is the post hoc analysis. Remember that's when we weren't controlling for BMI and stroke. And you can see the results are a little bit different. For the entire long follow-up period of one year, again, there is no statistical significant difference for any of the uh, composite index. For the uh, aggregate of all ages in the period right around the stroke, there are differences and they are a little bit different than when we controlled for smoking and BMI, but mainly there are lower IRRs. So when we control, we actually see a bigger separation in the risk associated with stroke. Now another way that's easier perhaps to look at these is looking at the Kaplan-Meier curves. And you can see in this figure with the Kaplan-Meier curves that when we have all of the events together uh, as the composite, there is a difference. And you can see that that difference begins to separate from the two lines about the day of the zoster being diagnosed. The lines separate further for TIA and for stroke. For MI, the lines are different though. You can see there is really not a separation. They actually pull back together after the herpes zoster. So there really doesn't seem to be an impact of the zoster event on the rate of acute MI. To summarize, in the analysis of the larger group, regardless of age, the likelihood of suffering a TIA, stroke, or composite event was statistically significantly higher in those suffering from an acute zoster event. In conclusion, zoster was associated with a statistically significant increase in the risk of TIA stroke and the combined stroke TIA and acute MI in adults in the period immediately surrounding the acute herpes zoster or shingles event. However, the rate of vascular complications associated with zoster appears transient in nature, diminishing in significance and returning in magnitude to that of the general age-adjusted population by one year after the zoster event.
More research into zoster and vascular risk association is needed. We need to understand better exactly what's happening, exactly what are the reasons, and to, go to guide development of interventions and policies enabling prevention for adults of all ages. I think that this information from a clinical perspective is important to give us just one more reason for trying to prevent zoster in those in which we have a method, and that is the zoster or uh, herpes zoster immunizations that are now available and recommended for adults age 50 and older. We don't have any kind of prevention for those at less than age 50, and this we need to keep exploring. But again, immunization as recommended by the ACIP for all adults 50 and older for receiving shingles vaccines. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you'll read the article for more details. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.